Necro Salad! My goal today is to teach you how to download and install and configure Manafin, uh, the emulator. Very lightweight and the best emulator I've used so far. Um, there's some prerequisites that we need to go through and I'm going to be using a ROM from Cool ROM. We're going to be downloading Castlevania Symphony of the Night as our test. So all of the links, all of the software I am showing you is going to be in the description below. So just follow that and make sure you follow along and download everything that you need to and make sure it's in a proper place. So let's go over the software that you'll need to download before we can actually do any work. So the first thing, obviously, is the emulator itself, Manafin. And if you take a look at the URL, like I said, it's in the description. Uh, you're going to go to the latest release, and you are going to download the latest release, most likely 64-bit Windows. The easiest way for you to tell if you're running 32-bit or 64-bit Windows is to navigate to the C drive. Your root drive might be a different drive for you, but most people, 99% of people, it's C drive. And if you see a program files and a program files x86, like you see here, you're running 64-bit. If you only see program files, that means you're running 32-bit Windows. So make sure you download the proper versions of this software as you proceed through the video. As you're downloading these files, make sure they're going into one single location so you can access them. For most people, that's in the downloads directory uh, for most browsers. Just you navigate to the C drive or users directory. You'll find downloads in there somewhere. The next piece of the puzzle you'll need to download is an actual BIOS dump from the PlayStation itself. Now, the BIOS dump I'm going to be using or downloading is the SCPH5501. And all you need to do here, as you follow the URL that I've linked to you in the description, is just click it and save the file. And you'll see how that comes into play a little bit later. The next piece of software is going to be Notepad++. You might already have this installed on your machine, but it's a very good tool for editing a lot of uh, just source code, basic things that Notepad itself will not display very well. So I'm going to download the 64-bit version of Notepad++, just the regular MSI installer here. Feel free to choose whatever one of these you want, but most people should probably stick to this one here. Next, I will be downloading Castlevania Symphony of Night ROM from CoolROM.com, uh, your number one emulation choice. Now, these guys provide pretty good ROMs that I've seen so far. They're exactly what they're supposed to be. They get high ratings. So the only thing with these ROM sites, like ME Farm and all that stuff, is you need to be very specific on what you're clicking to download these ROMs. So you're going to see all this garbage on your screen. And this is, this is pretty good as far as garbage goes on a website. What I always look for on cool ROMs is this alternative download link. That's going to pop up an ad. It doesn't even load on my machine the way I have it set up. But just click here, click around in this black area or whatever it looks like. Just try and skip through and you'll eventually get a download your file button right here. And that's going to download the 7-zip file. It's an archive. You'll see. And the next piece of software you might already have this as well as 7-Zip. It's uh, open source software. Again, 64-bit version. I'm just going to download that now. Now that you have all these software downloaded and in one location, hopefully, uh, we're going to get to work here. Uh, the ROM will take a little bit longer to download from Cool ROMs just because of the way they push that out. It's very throttled from what I've seen. So the first thing we're going to do is take Manafin and unzip it. So just right click it and hit extract all. And that is going to extract all the files, put it in a folder with the same name in the same location. See here, this is what we want. Your version might be different based on whatever year or day it is that you're downloading. It's going to be different. But just drill into this and we need to make a very key change here to this executable as you see here. 
So with manafin.exe highlighted, you're going to right click and go to properties. And this window is going to pop up. You're going to switch over to the compatibility tab and click run this program as administrator. That's it. Hit apply, hit OK. And now I'm going to right click on manafin.exe again and click run as administrator. And what that is going to do is generate a series of folders, files, and it's also going to generate this config file, which we're going to configure a little bit later after we get Notepad++ set up. Next, you're going to want to take this scph5501.bin file and you're going to drag it in the Mednafin folder and make sure it is the actual extracted folder and not the zipped folder that we downloaded originally. So that should be sitting in there just like that. If that is not in the proper location, Mednafin will not work. Next, we're going to install Notepad++. Very simple, just double click it, hit OK, go through the prompts as you would with any piece of software. Don't need to run it now, it's not necessary. We're going back into the Mednafin folder now. And this Mednafin config files.cfg is, uh, there's a very specific change we need to make here as well. Now, don't get overwhelmed. It's not that big of a deal, but it's going to look very complicated if you've never messed with any of this stuff before. Now, I already have this edit with Notepad++ here because of the way I have my file associations. But for you, if you don't see it this way, all I'm doing here is I'm right clicking. I'm going to open with choose another app, more apps, look for another app on this PC, and from here if you installed Notepad++ properly you're going to find this in your program files. It should appear like a folder should appear as Notepad++ in your C program files directory. So you can go into this folder and select notepad++.exe and hit open. That is the big ugly mess I was talking about. Like I said, don't get overwhelmed. We're only making one change here. So at the very top of this file, you should see this line, cache entire CD images in memory and zero means off. We're going to change this to one. and Hit save. That is it. We just told this program when it searches a config file to cache the entire CD into memory. Now there are other settings in here. There's tons of settings as you can see on the settings list here. There's just tons and tons of stuff and they can all be edited, uh, but most of it is not necessary. You can edit some scan line functions, other stuff in here to make it customized the way you like it. But for now, all we need is that change right there. So with that saved, I can close Notepad++ and the configuration portion of Manafin is done. Now we need to move on to the ROM itself. So back in our main file structure here, I have Castlevania Symphony Night dot 7z. That's a 7-zip file. So you need to have 7-zip installed in order to extract this. Uh, you have other programs that can do it, like WinRAR and stuff like that. But for simplicity's sake, just make sure you install 7-zip on your machine. And I'm double-clicking the executable here and going through the install prompt as usual. Now. Right click Castlevania, the file there. You should see a 7-zip structure here. Any one of these will work. As long as you have something that is prompting you to extract the files, 
or extract here or seven zip extract here you will have what you need so I'm extracting the archive now and that should give me a few files from the ROM itself so now that the archive is extracted we have these three files here we have these two dot bin files and this dot Q file the dot Q file is what we're looking for in this case so what I'm going to do now is open up another window, the same exact file location. And this part is a little weird, but this is just how it works. So take one of your windows, navigate in the Menafin folder, find your menafin.exe, find your .q file, and this is the, the part about it. And this is telling Windows to open this .q file using mednafin.exe. So all you're going to do is click and hold, left click and hold, you're going to drag it on top of mednafin and let go. Uh, you see, I forgot one very important step. There's always an oversight in one of these tutorial videos. If you notice, it didn't run just now. Uh, a good step in troubleshooting any problems that you have with this process of dragging your Q file on top of menafin.exe. And when it does that and it doesn't do anything for you, find this standard output .txt file right here, open it up, and just take a look through here. And you're gonna, it's going to tell you the problem that it's having. And right down here on the bottom, you're going to see that it's looking for this file. It says no such file or directory. And you notice here, this is SCPH5501. Over here, I have SCPH-5501. So if I simply rename this file, that should fix our problem. So again, dragging the .q file to menafin.exe, and let's see what happens. Look at that, fires right up. What I love about this emulator is it boots up like it's a PlayStation itself. Now that we have the game actually running in the emulator window, you're gonna see here that is in a windowed mode, which I, I like to have it boot up that way to begin with, to make sure it looks normal. Now, a common keyboard shortcut to full screen a windowed window <laughs> is to hold Alt and press Enter. And with me pressing Enter there, that acted as the start to the actual emulator. Now, the keyboard mapping for this emulator based on the PlayStation controller is actually pretty good. The directional pad is mapped to WASD, WASAD, and the buttons themselves for the PlayStation controller are mapped to the number pad off to the right to the keyboard. So two, four, eight, and six acting like a standard diamond layout of the PlayStation controller. As you can see here, navigating around the menu, old school controls, let me navigate around as expected. From this point, you're pretty much free to play the game if you're fine with using the keyboard, but I have an Xbox One controller that is connected through USB, and it's very important that you always have these sorts of emulators running with controllers connected via USB. I haven't had much luck with a wireless setup. Might be different for you, but always having them connected hardwired always uh, works better for me. Now when you're in the emulator with your controller connected, uh, before we do anything, just take a minute and wiggle around the analog sticks and press the buttons on the controller itself. There's notes in Menafin, if you've read through the documentation like I have, that just wiggling around the sticks and hitting all the buttons on the controller, as I'm doing right now, if you can hear it, uh, keeps the, there's almost a corruption that happens if you don't do that step and the configuration is going to be all off. So I've properly wiggled all the sticks, pressed the buttons. Now I'm going to press F3 
I'm going to see along the bottom there. Two joystick gamepad along buttons detected. If you don't see anything there, it's time to back up and make sure that your controller is actually connected to the machine and that your machine recognizes it. I can't troubleshoot that with you here, but uh, maybe I'll do that in a later video if that's a problem for someone. Now the next step is that we need to map the buttons of your controller to Mednafin's config file. So what we're going to do is hold Alt, Shift, and press number 1. Not F1, just 1. And you're going to see along the bottom there that's going to ask me to config the various buttons. It's going to ask me twice. I'm not sure if that's just multiple mappings or to verify. But I'm going to go through and press up on the D-pad. Down... And you can guess that I'm, I'm mapping this properly here. You don't really need me to say it for you. Select. These rapid configurations, just press the button once, as usual. You're, all, you're just pressing the button once to configure these buttons. L1, L2, R1, R2. Configuration finished. That's all it needed. You can configure the joysticks using the up and down and all that stuff. Uh, just work with it, test it out. I can't really show you that. It's a little difficult, but uh, you can get it working if you wiggle the sticks, like I said, before configuring and take your time with it. Make sure you move the stick fully up and back down during that configuration process if you're going to use the joysticks themselves. So now that I've configured the controller, I can freely move around the menu here. And we'll just we'll just fire something up as proof of concept here. There's nothing in the save files. The save files do work. Um, I'm not going to play through to that save point if you ever played Castlevania, but they do work. I verified that. Skip through cutscenes. Uh, it's a good time to point out some essential hotkeys here, or shortcuts. The intro is good, but if you've seen it once, you don't need to see it again, and you're going to keep seeing it over and over. So, let me just get to that point over here. This Richter takes his sweet old time. So we're going to get to Dracula here. It's going to go to a cutscene. Now, you can speed up this process by holding tilde up in the top left of your keyboard there. This will speed through everything. Conversely, you can hold backslash to slow everything down. And that's been less useful, but these unskippable cutscenes, just hold tilde and you'll skip right through it. And here we are fighting Dracula, playing Castlevania on Windows 10 with an Xbox One controller. Uh, and I'm hitting shift F1 here and you'll see at the top I'm running at a smooth 60 frames per second. I've never seen that drop. I've tried some old PlayStation games like Future Cop that just seem to hang and they just don't with this emulator. The other emulators that have a GUI and nice interface, they work, but for whatever reason they just they seem to really chug on a lot of things. And that's it. You're Set up on Manafin, you're playing your favorite old games using a very modern controller and very modern machine. Whatever you decide to do, just have fun doing it. Let me know if you had any problems or if everything works smoothly for you, and I will see you in the next video.